If you're going to invest in education, fellas, there should be a definite outcome, a very clear outcome, not a maybe outcome, not a not a, a, a potential outcome or leave it up to chance outcome or hopeful outcome or a pray a Hail Mary outcome. It should be two plus two equals four. You go to the school, you get this job. 90% of the degrees y'all are getting is garbage, useless, middle management, mommy, manicure job. Yo, Elliot. Yo, Elliot. I am scheduled to finish my university degree soon. I currently have no jobs lined up at the moment for when I finish. What can I do to look for a job as soon as possible? So this is what makes me question whether or not it's worth going to university. Um, I got four children and my wife and I have been talking the past few days specifically because we're going to start homeschooling what credits the children are going to need if they decide to go to college. And every time that conversation comes up, both she and I are like, but why? But why? But besides, besides for sports, which my middle daughter is, she's going to be an incredible athlete. We're going to start making some videos with me training her. She's, she's a track athlete. She's a soccer player. So there's a legitimate chance that she might want to continue doing that. And I'm trying to look for other ways for her to continue playing with that, playing those sports without going into debt for university. Um, I don't, I don't like it. I don't like the idea of it at all. I'm not paying for it. I'm not paying for university for any of my children. I know that's not your question. Um, but the reason why I want to bring this up is because I think a better option, particularly for my son, right? I don't know what's going to happen in the future, but I'm just kind of like thinking ahead of time, trade school, trade school, buddy. You got to learn a trade. How do you come out of a freaking university? Would you pay, you pay like $60,000 or more for, and you don't have a job lined up. University is such a hoax. You should, when you get out of university, there should be a job. And maybe there was a time when a job would be ready to get lined up for you. But when you go to trade school, you know exactly what you're going to do. When you learn how to do electronics, right? If you become an electrician, you, what do you do? You, could, you apply for the thousands of electrician jobs that are out there that, that a lot of people don't want because we've been hoaxed, we've been tricked out of labor jobs, men. Men, this is huge. We have been tricked out of labor jobs in order to line the pockets of these universities who give us a pie in the sky uh, pipe dream about having a comfortable, cushy job, which is really more suited for women. I think a part of the problem that we're having in the culture right now with regard to uh, you know men suffering and this uh, this, this lack of polarity within the, b between the, the genders, between the sexes, is that the university system is set up for women to succeed. And if you know it's winning because 60 plus percent of middle management are women, right? Most entrepreneurs are men and most, most labor workers are men. But in between middle management, you know, that position where you're not actually a technician because you're not really doing the work, but you're not the boss, you're not the, you're not the entrepreneur, you're not the CEO, you're that middle man that basically everybody hates, right? And a lot of time they're women now. It's the person that relays the message from up top and, 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 and forces the people down below to do it. Uh, that's a crappy job. That's a crappy position. And we don't need that many of them. And that's why people are, that's why people are, are struggling with these university degrees because that's all they make you good for. Most of them, most of these basic university degrees, things that don't actually prepare you with skills that you're going to use at a, at a, at, at a, at a thing like, elect, like putting electricity together or putting plumbing together or putting together a crew so that you can be a contractor, uh, or even some of the micro dirty jobs, right? You know, fishing, you know, working on those big fishing boats in Alaska or, uh, or digging trenches for, for pipelines. That's like man work. And this is why I'm telling you, this is a big part of the reason why men are suffering. Mike Rowe has a lot of videos on YouTube. You should go check him out. Mike R O E. He used to be a host of a show called dirty jobs. This guy, he's, he did one with Tucker Carlson. Not too long ago. I was, I was watching it. He's spot on. You can make six figures. Actually. In fact, I had this young man come to my house, the other house, 
uh, a couple months ago because our air conditioner was going out and his dad owns the air conditioning company. His dad started an air conditioning company after he retired. The guy was like 45, 50. He started an air conditioning company so that he could hire his sons. And so his two sons work for him. He's got five sons. Three of the sons don't want to work for him. They wanted to go to college and they're all, you know, highfalutin, but deep in debt. And uh, what he was telling me was that they can't find work. He says they are they can't find workers. He says they are so busy because, you know, air conditioning in Florida, it's always breaking. He says we are so busy. you right. Like it takes it, it took him like a couple of days to get back to me when I needed him to fix something. And so we were just chatting because we have mutual friends. So, you know, we just we just chatted up when he's working. And um, he was like, yeah, I can't find we cannot find anybody who wants to work. Nobody wants to work. And this was even before COVID. This was before COVID when everybody was getting there after before people were getting their stimulus checks. Now nobody definitely don't want to work. And I watched, my daughter showed me a video the other day where somebody was like, kind of like saying that that's a good thing. I was like, that's not a good thing. It's not a good thing that the stimulus checks are keeping people alive because that means that you're dependent on big daddy government giving you your cheese check. You can't, you can't live that way. That's, that's, that's the essence of insecurity, right? People like to say that being an entrepreneur makes you uh, insecure. No, 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 no. It means I'm securing myself. I'm insecure when I got to depend on the government, right? I got to depend on, uh, you know, Obama checks. I know Obama hasn't been in office a long time, but I like the way his name sounds. So you're asking me what you need to do with this university degree, right? You're getting out. What are you going to do? You need to look for a job as soon as possible. Look for... Look, so I know your I know what your degree is in. I remember because we had this conversation before, and um, y- you can't do anything with it. It's a, it's a useless degree. I know how bad it sounds to hear that, but Elliot, I spent all this time, all this money, I got this degree. It's a useless degree. It's a useless fucking degree. And you know it's useless. Why? Because you asked me what you're supposed to do with it. <laughs> you're supposed to know exactly what you're supposed to do with it. When you get that certificate from. Uh, electri- uh, electrician school, you know what you're supposed to do. You don't ask anybody a freaking question. You go and you be that uh, electrician, right? I, I, I even think they even have like an, in, um, an internship you got to do for a little while, apprenticeship or whatever. You should, if you're going to invest in education, fellas, there should be a definite outcome, a very clear outcome, not a maybe outcome, not a, not a, a, a potential outcome or leave it up to chance outcome or hopeful outcome or a pray a Hail Mary outcome. It should be two plus two equals four. You go to this school, you get this job. 90% of the degrees y'all are getting is garbage, useless, middle management, mommy, manicure jobs, right? Those are the jobs that the girls get, right? And that's why so many of our, so many like factory jobs and things like that were shipped out to Mexico and to Guatemala or Chile or some, some other third world country because our boys here don't want those jobs. They want to be $60,000 in debt, have sex with a bunch of girls, get drunk every night, play video games and pass their test four years later. And they come out and say, well, what am I going to do now? Rubbing their eyes, taking the crust out their eyes could have been sleeping for four fucking years. It's a waste. It's a complete waste. I know that doesn't help you where you at right now. So you want to know, Elliot, what am I going to do? You have to find a fucking job. Right? I know how exciting it is. I know that you have the know-how for starting your own business. Most guys are not ready for that. Most people are not ready for that most businesses are going to work when you actually have a solid skill in a particular direction too. I started my non-job doing what? Training people because I've been working out since I was 14. I get it. There's a lot of, there's a lot of like made up jobs or made up careers that you got, that we make, right? That, that because of the internet, the internet allows us to like, allow us to like fake it and fudge it and to like make stuff up that allows us to make money. Right. And I, that's cool too. If you, and I, you know what I call those people? Hustlers. There's people as hustlers. There's people that are just, they're just money makers. They, I have friends that are like this. They'll just sell shit on eBay. They'll sell shit on Amazon. 
I have this friend, he started out giving betting tips when he was in college, he would give betting tips in an AOL chat room. Like he would just, he would just, he was a schemer. He would just find different ways to become a, just a scheme and make money, all right? Um, but, but for the most part, you're gonna have to have a solid realistic skill. Some solid profitable, not even realistic, profitable. You have to have some profitable skill. Something, some money maker about you. It could be your labor, right? Like, for example, if I wasn't doing, you, you know what I did when I was in university, when I graduated? I was moving furniture. That was the first job I had. I was moving furniture. And I remember uh, Wednesday when we had all the guys moving all my boxes, the always boxes, they were furniture movers. And I remember watching these guys moving the furniture. They were movers. And I was like, I, I, I kind of admired that. I liked doing it. You know why? Because I have a profitable skill of picking stuff up and putting it down. I'm strong. I'm in shape. I was one of the best movers. When they, had, when they needed like things that were very heavy or needed to go upstairs or they needed something done quickly, yo, pass me the ball. I was excited to do that. It wasn't a high paying job, but it was a legit job that, that allowed me to use one of my serviceable skills, something that I can do. What can you do? What can you do that's profitable? And then you go and you offer that skill. You offer that skill somewhere. Like I said before, like there's nothing wrong with labor. I like moving furniture. I gave all those guys huge tips because they reminded me of myself. And I was like, damn right, guys. I see you busting your face, busting your ass. I gave them big tips. Because right? I, cause I appreciate labor jobs. I appreciate guys that just work, just freaking work. So... In a way, it doesn't matter what you do. You just got to be able to do it. You got to be able to do it well, do it consistently, and earn your paycheck. It doesn't mean that you're going to be doing it forever. I think this is another one of the problems that, you, that this generation has, is that we, we feel as if the minute you take a job that you don't love, that you're doomed, and then it becomes like itchy, like an itchy sweater, and you're like, I just I got to get rid of this job. I just got to get it off of me. I just can't stand it anymore. And all I do is field emails from you guys complaining about your fucking job. And you know what ended up happening most of the time when you send me those kind of emails? I tell you, love your job, appreciate your job, do your job well. Do it with a smile on your fucking face because that's the type of character, that's the type of, of energy that you need to have in order to be successful anywhere at any time. You can't have a job that you're doing to pay the bills and there's nothing wrong with having a job just to pay the bills. You don't have to freaking love your job. There's nothing wrong with having a job that pays the bills, but there's nothing worse than scorning that job. I hate this job. Love that job. And why I've had this conversation with you guys numerous times. But when you love your job, when you love your work, when you love what you do, not because it's pleasurable or you're passionate about it, but because like the word love really means it's an active participation. People think love is a feeling. I know I'm writing all over the place here right now. That's just the way I am right now. I'm a little rusty today. You, you make love. You make love. You make love to that job. You make love to that woman. What does that mean? You don't feel love. You don't fall in love. You're not passionate about love. You're not giddy about love. You make love. That means you do it with a good attitude, with, with uh, gratitude, a gratitude and good attitude. That's what you got to do. So go find you a job sweeping the streets. Go find you a job painting houses. Go find you a job mowing lawns. I got all this. I'm at the ranch now. I need to find somebody who's going to mow all these lawns. They call it bush hogging. I need somebody with a bush hogger to come out here and bush hog all my property. And I hope that guy has a smile on his face and he's listening to cool tunes and he's whistling while he's working. Mow lawns. I, if, if I didn't, I, I always think about this. I always think this way. I don't know about you guys, but I always think in terms of if I, if, let's say the internet shut off or let's say like I, I couldn't find a job, I would, I would buy some landscaping equipment. I'll buy landscaping equipment. I will start mowing lawns. Either that or I would start uh, detailing cars. I'm not much into cars. I probably wouldn't want to do the de car detailing thing, but I would probably be a, a landscaper go buy a lawnmower and start mowing people lawn bro these are all just different ideas these are all just different ideas now, the bottom line is though you have to do something the worst thing you could do is do nothing go get a job that you don't that you that you that you're not excited about go and you go and you do it well 
and you save your money and you allow yourself to be open for other opportunities to arise. But in the meantime, you keep a good attitude about the things that you're doing. And that's really, that's really all I can offer you. You say you want to look for a job as soon as possible. Guess what? Nobody wants to work right now. There's lots of jobs. I see help wanted signs all the time. Nobody wants to work because they're getting that COVID check. I don't know if you guys are getting COVID checks. I don't know if you guys are getting COVID checks. Nobody sent me a COVID check. And even if they wanted to send me COVID checks, I would do everything that I could not to have that COVID check. If I qualify for a COVID check, I'm trying to be disqualified for the COVID check. I don't want it. Not because I don't want free money. Everybody wants free money. But because I don't want to be a sloth. I don't want to waste my days away. I don't want to waste my life away. I don't want to be a, a, a suck on the system. It's a pride thing, just to be honest with you. It's a pride thing for me. Right? I'd rather, I'd rather work 40 hours for the same check that somebody's just going to give to me. That way I could look I could look somebody in the eye. I would be ashamed of myself if I didn't work and I was collecting checks like that. I'd be ashamed of myself. I couldn't look at my father in the eye, right? I couldn't look at my mother in the eye. I couldn't look at my wife in the eye, right? What a degenerate. I would be, especially if, my, if, if I look my wife in the eye, I'm collecting those checks, and my wife accepted me that way, i will be ashamed of her too. I'd be like, what, what kind of woman are you? That you just letting your man collect welfare? You think that's okay? Right? I'd be mad at my wife if she accepted that from me. <laughs> Can't do it. Wouldn't do it. Go and get a job. That's it, man. That's all I got to say on that. Done. Yo, it's your bro, Elliot. I hope you enjoyed that video. If you did, you ought to know that it was a clip from the coaching sessions that I have every week with my King Transformation students, where, among other things, we get together for about four or five hours a week. We talk on things related to becoming kings in our lives, in fitness, business, and with women. If that sounds like you and you want to join a like-minded group of men who are growing stronger every day in every way in this degenerate age, then it's real simple. Just follow me on Instagram and then DM me the word king, K-I-N-G. Me and my team will get back to the details and see if you qualify to join us. Hope to see you at our next meeting. Done.